To get started with setting up an XML connection, you'll first have to make sure that you have your driver set up for your agents. To do this, you'll have to locate the zip file that you've downloaded from our servers and extract the files. So here you see the jar files, which are the drivers, and some documentation and sample files. To set up the drivers for your agent, you first must copy the drivers into your query surge agent JDBC folder. So if you copy the files, and then go to your query surge installation directory, and then under the agent directory, there's a JDBC folder. So you just need to copy those two jar files into this folder. You may need to replace the current CSV driver. Once the drivers are in place, you can start setting up the necessary configurations for your XML files. So let's take a look at the example XML file that we have. Here you'll see the general XML structure. So in order to set up a connection to an XML file, you'll need to identify the major XML tags and the children tags that you'd want. The major XML tags will translate to rows in your query search data sets, and your children tag will translate to columns. So in this example, you'll see we have the rate objects, which are our major XML tags, and each rate object has a list of children tags. So in this example, CV, country, currency, ISO, etc. So once we know how our XML file is laid out, we can begin creating our schema file, which will tell the driver how to read the files correctly. You'll need to create the schema file manually, but you'll see here we have an example schema file that we've already created. And you can name this whatever you'd like. So let's take a look at how this is formatted. So the top level tags in this configuration file are the schema tags, and then you can have one or more table tags defined within these. Each of the table tags will correspond to one of the XML files that you want to read. So in this case we have the table tag, which you'll give a name attribute, which will correlate to the table name in your SQL. We also have the file attribute, which will allow you to specify the location of your XML file. This can be a relative path or an absolute path. In this case, we've included the relative path to the XML file since they're in the same directory. The table also has the path attribute, which will specify the path to the major XML tag in our XML file. Once you have the table configured, you can add in column configurations. So here you see, for each of these column tags, there'll be a column in the data sets that's returned to query search. The column tags will need a name attribute, which will just be the column name, a path attribute, which will be the absolute or relative XML path in your XML file. We'll also specify a type attribute, which will say the data type for this column, and a size attribute, which will specify the column size of the data. So let's open up our XML file again so we can take a look at this example. So you can see our first column, the CD column, is a child of the rate tag in the XML file, and the path specified is a relative path to the rate in the XML file. Here this is of type string and a size of 128. You can also see the configuration for the rest of these columns. If you omit the size attribute, it will just use the default for that data type. So once you have the schema file set up, you'll just need to save that. And then we can log into query search and begin setting up our XML connection. So here I'll just log in. And to add a new connection, I'll go into the administration section. And I'll go to the connections table. And then I'll choose the add button. So this will open up the connection wizard. And I'll just choose next to continue. So I'm going to name this connection. And then I'll choose my data source from the list. For the XML connections, you'll need to choose the All Other JDBC Connections, or the Connection Extensibility option. Then you can press Next to continue. The first thing you'll need to specify is the driver class. For this XML driver, the driver class is jstels.jdbc.xml.xmldriver2, and you can find this in our documentation. Pressing Next to continue you'll have to first specify the connection URL that the driver will use. This is of the format jdbc colon jstels on xml. Then you'll need to include your path to the schema file. Note this is the schema.xml file, not your original xml file. 
This path will need to be accessible to any agent that will be using this connection. In this case, I'm only going to be using a local agent, so I'm making this a local path. And then finally, you can include any additional URL attributes. We don't need to include a username and password here, so we can skip this. And then if you'd like, you can create a test query that will allow you to test this connection. The test query must return at least one row to be able to verify that the connection was successful. So finally, you'll see a summary of the fields that you entered, and you can test the connection by clicking on the Test Connection button. And you can see here that the test passed. So now we can just save this connection, and it'll show up in our connections list. So now that we've created our connection, let's create a simple query pair. So we can just go into the design library, and click on the create new query pair. Here I'm just going to call this XML test, and save it. So first we'll have to select the new connection that we just created, the XML connection. Then we'll need to write the query to give us the data that we're looking for. This takes in a standard SQL syntax, and you can see the table name and column names that we've specified in the schema file. You can also note that the table name is surrounded by backticks, which is necessary if there are any spaces in your table name. We've also included a, a WHERE clause here. So I have another connection that should have the same data that we want to compare. So I'll select that connection as my target connection, and enter in the same query. So now I'll save both of these queries and I'll do a quick design time run. I'm going to select the agent that I want here since it's a local file to that agent and then choose run. So you can see this brought back three source rows and three target rows and it appears that they're the same. So if we take a look at the results, and so now you can see the data from the XML file separated by the columns that we specified in the schema file. So this completes the tutorial for creating an XML connection. If you need any more help, you can check out the help section within the application or contact our support using the questions live chat button.